Today we'll be looking at central and inscribed angles within a circle. Now yesterday we talked a little about central angles. A central angle is an angle whose vertex is the center of the circle. So this is the central angle because right at the center of the circle. Now remember, the measure of the central angle, so angle ABC, equals the measure of the arc that it intercepts or that it crosses. So if this angle here was 85 degrees, the arc it crosses would also be 85 degrees. Recall one more time that a circle has 360 degrees in it as well. All right, so let's look at this problem. We have a measure of angle BOC. BOC equals 32 degrees, and that's a central angle. Therefore, the arc that it intercepts is also going to be 32 degrees. The measure of arc CD is 58 degrees. Therefore, the central angle that corresponds to arc CD will be 58 degrees. Now, it tells me also that CA is a diameter, so it splits the circle in half. If a full circle is 360, then a half circle is 180. So if I have 58, 180 minus 58 gives me 122 degrees, which will also be true right there. Same thing, half circle 180 minus 32 gives me 148 and 148. So then, of course, we go in and fill in our blanks. Arc BC is 32 degrees. Angle DOA is 122 degrees. Arc BD is 32 plus 58 is 90 degrees. And arc A to B to C is 180 degrees. So that's a bit of a review of what we did yesterday in class. All right, so here we have a pie chart that shows me the percent of Americans that watch sports on TV watching certain sports. So which sports are they watching or at what percent? We have football at 38%, basketball, hockey, soccer, and baseball. And I want to know, with this information, what the measure of arc CD is. Now, recall that a circle has 360 degrees. And this is 14%. So what I'm asking for is what's 14% of 360 degrees. And once again, I chose 14 because I'm asking for CD. So that's from here to here, which represents soccer. So 14% of 360. 14% could be written as 0.14. Of means multiply anytime you see that word of. So you just type in 0.14 times 360, and you get 50.4 degrees. So that's true also for the central angle. So think, how would I find the measure of arc AG? Well, that's 38%. So I'm going to do 38% of 360, which means 0 0.38 times 360. And when I do that, I get 136.8 degrees, which will also be true for the arc on the outside. So on your homework, you have to do some problems like that. So make sure you understand that when I'm giving you percents, you can break it down in that manner. All right, let's move on to inscribed angles. An inscribed angle is an angle whose vertex lies on the circle. So a central angle is right in the center, and an inscribed angle is right on the edge of the circle. So angle ABC is the inscribed angle, and then AC is the intercepted arc because it's the arc that the angle is crossing. Here's the theorem. The measure of an inscribed angle, this right here, is half the measure of its intercepted arc. So the measure of angle ABC is half of the arc. So if this were to be 30, then this right here would be 60, because 30 is half of 60. This is very important that you understand this theorem, that the inscribed angle will always be half of the arc it intercepts. I could also say, let's say this, this arc is 100 degrees, then the angle would have to be 50, so I can go both ways with it. All right, so let's go ahead and practice here. The measure of angle ADC is 152 degrees. Now ask yourself, what type of angle is angle ADC? Well, it's in the center, so it's a central angle, which means that this arc right here would also be 152 degrees. Now, it's asking me for angle ABC down here. This is an inscribed angle, and it intercepts this arc right here. Oh, which we know is 152. 
So the inscribed angle will be half of 152, which is 76 degrees. And finally, it wants arc A to B to C, which is the whole circle except for the 152. So you do 360 minus 152, and you get 208 degrees. So a lot of times we'll give you essential and inscribed, and you'll have to work through both. All right, here we have angle ACD equals 62 degrees. Arc CD equals 58 degrees. And arc BC equals 47 degrees. And I want to figure out the rest. So you have an inscribed angle right here intercepting this arc. So that means if we double 62, we get 124 for arc A to D. Now, angle ABD is also an inscribed angle, and it intercepts the same arc. You see the points are both on A and D. So this will also be half, so 62 degrees for angle A, B, D. Now we can figure out arc A to D to C. Well, we know 124. We know 58. We add those up. We get 182 for arc A, D, C. And finally, it wants to know angle B, D, A, which is actually not on there, so that's going to be a typo. Could we figure out this angle right here? Well, it's an inscribed angle, and it intercepts the arc at 47. So half of 47 would be 23.5 degrees. All right, here are some theorems that go with inscribed angles. The opposite angles of a quadrilateral, so let's say I put a quadrilateral inside of a circle. The opposite angles of a quadrilateral inscribed in a circle are supplementary. So angle B plus angle D equals 180. Angle A plus angle C equals 180. That's whenever the quadrilateral is inscribed in the circle. So if I told you this was 70, you would know right away that angle C would be 110. What if this was right here 100 degrees? What would angle D be? Well, 180 minus 100 is 80 degrees. Another theorem is an angle inscribed in a semicircle. So my endpoints for the angle are on the diameter, C, A, and C. So an angle inscribed in a semicircle is a right angle. Because it's going to cut the circle in half, and this would be 180, and half of 180 would equal 90. It's also important that you get that one down right there. All right, and finally, our last theorem. The measure of an angle formed by a chord, so chord is right here in the circle, and a tangent, which is outside the circle, but touches at one point, is equal to half the measure of the intercepted arc. So it's the same kind of concept as an inscribed angle. So if this arc was 200 degrees, it goes from here to here. That angle would be 100 degrees. So make sure that you get those three theorems down and go with inscribed angles about the quadrilateral, the tangent, and the semicircle. And let's try out one problem here and see how we do. O is the center of the circle. AC is the diameter. So this inscribed angle, since its endpoints are the diameter, will be 90 degrees. Now, we have a triangle here, and it's an isosceles triangle, which makes that 45 and 45. So angle BAC is 45 degrees. Arc A to B to C is half the circle, so that's 180 degrees. And arc BC, ooh, well, let's see here. We got an inscribed angle of 45, so we double it for 90 degrees. Let's see if we can get one more in here. Angle BAD is 58 degrees. Arc BC down here is 48 degrees. And arc AB is 110 degrees. Well, based on my knowledge about quadrilaterals in a circle, angle A and C have to add up to 180, so that makes this 122 degrees. So let's see what else we can do from here. We got 48 down here for the arc, 110 for this arc. That means if I need this whole thing is 58, that means this whole arc has to be double 58, which is 116. But I know 48 already, so that leaves, let's see, 116 minus 48 is 68 degrees. Okay, I'm moving right along. Let's see, it's still not enough. Oh, here we go. Angle D's 
inscribed angles right here, which covers this whole arc, which is 158. And half of 158 is going to be 79 degrees. So these have to add to 180, so 101 degrees. Let's see if that gives us all we need. So arc BAD, oh, we got to figure this out. What does a whole circle add up to? 360, so it'd be 360 minus 110 minus 48 minus 68. And I get 134 for this arc right here. Arc CD is 68 degrees. And angle CDA is 79 degrees. All right, so please make sure you practice the homework, review this as need to, and get those theorems down. Have a great day.